Okay, so um, I added two documents to my Quechua sample. The first one was the Wikipedia article that we were looking at earlier. Um, and generally, Wikipedia articles are a lot of garbage and a little bit of text. So what I did was add these two um, Jape grammars from the Jape grammar folder um, to filter off uh, and only use the data that's in a paragraph because the paragraphs are generally going to be sentences, and that's interesting to me. Um, as a linguist, we want to look for data in context, um, not just words um, <laughs> all over the place. So uh, that was one uh, file I looked at. The other one was a, a Quechua magazine, which I found online. Um, it's here. It's a magazine written in Quechua. Um, pretty interesting. Not too long, not too big. Um, kind of a reasonable size for, for exploring. Um, I loaded it into gate. It came out as pure text like that. Um, there are some of the markups that you have inside the, the PDF there also. Um, and then I ran this script on them. Oops. Um, basically, the script is uh, going through the whole document and looking at the words that are in it. A couple of things that you might want to change on the script is you might want to turn this on. Right now it's commented out. This allows it to go through only a small section of the tokens. If you're gonna do a little bit of debugging, you might not wanna run the whole document. The thing you might wanna change is the out path. You should put this for the out path that's on your computer. Um, go through to all the way to the repository, which is here, and deep into the source folder as the out path. And then that way, um, when you create the output, it'll go into these folders, which are in the out path area. So I'll just show you that here on the terminal. So if I go right here, this is where the output goes. So the output goes into the output text folder. Um, that's where I put the text output. Um, for any output that used JavaScript, like to make a graph or to make a nice picture, I put it in the JavaScript folder. And for anything that output that makes a Jape grammar, I put it in the Jape grammar folder. That way I can use my, um, my output later for some other purpose, um, if that output is useful. The other thing about the output is that um, it's based on the name of the document that you run it on. So here I added a variable which points to the name of the document. So that way um, the outputs are going to go and correspond to the document that they're ran on. So that's kind of helpful too. So let's take a look um, at the output of the uh, processing. There's a couple of files here. There's two of each, one for each document, one for the Wikipedia, one for the magazine. So if I do, let's look at the suffix one first, because that's the fun one. Okay. And let's pipe that into more so that I can read it screen by screen. So here I'm looking at words. They're sorted by, sorted by rhyming, rhyming order, which means that the back end to the front. So there's a lot of words ending in A. Actually, I see quite a few words ending in cha. So I might hypothesize that cha was a suffix in the language, go through the data, look for things that end in cha, look for things that are systematic on the other side, that are actually um, stems, for example. Um, and I can find stems and morphology by looking basically from the suffix in. So I think cha might be an interesting candidate. Um, ya looks moderately interesting also. It could be just a se sequence of phonemes. Ala or Aya this could be that looks a lot like it's just Spanish. Uh huh. Yeah. So, of course, in a Quechua document, you're going to have quite a few Spanish words um, because Quechua is often spoken by bilinguals um, and, of course, spoken in countries which, are, which speak Spanish. So, a lot of place names are, and, um, you know, object names like fruit or whatever are going to be in Spanish. Taka looks like a potential morpheme or maybe just yeah talk or maybe just ka because here's an example of just ka by itself so that you get the idea that's one of the output files of the script the other one oops um will show you the frequency order so cat words function and then the magazine and pipe it into more so this shows me that the most popular word in that magazine is mana. At, there's 71 um, instances of mana in the document. So I would say that's definitely a function word. 
Um, if I go down around uh, 14 repetitions, I have this word, puku yun puku kuna. I don't really know how to pronounce it. I have to check with uh, uh, an informant to have them pronounce it for me. Um, that looks like a content word, so we're into content words already. Going down a little further. Ah, we're getting some uh, some clear words that are definitely not Quechua. Um, obviously Spanish. Like I said, um, you have to be aware that documents in any language that's a minority language would generally have other languages in them. All right, so let's get out of here. Let's go take a look and see what um, what our Jape grammar has tagged for us. So let's take a look at, for example, uh, mana. So mana is the most frequent word in the document. Uk and wata are other words that are very frequent. Those look like they're going to be functional words, so I'm going to go find out what they do. So let's go into my um, frequent my my list of tokens. I can sort it by type here. So if I just click on on type, it will um, allow me to do that. So I'm going to go look at the ones that are very functional. Here's an example of wata. Here's another one. Okay, wata. Uk. Okay, uk looks suspicious. It could be UK, you know, a website. All right. Yeah, no, it's definitely a, a Quechua word. We can see that it starts generally a phrase or a sentence. So I would say it's probably some sort of a connective, uh, a conjunction. Um, here's mana. So with these function words, all I have to do really is to look up in a dictionary. There's a small list of them. They're very frequent. Uh, you know, it's, uh, you just look them up and you can find out what they are and you can tag them with their real meanings. Now the content words in their hand are all over the place. And this is where a lot of the trouble is when you work on Quechua, at least in terms of people who are trying to do word counting. So words that have lots of suffixes just aren't going to be repeated and you're not going to find them in a dictionary. So that's when you need to start finding the morphemes and cutting them up and discovering what the root is and therefore just learning what the concepts in the document really are. So um, so that's just a quick, quick intro into this script which um, you can run on a gate document and it will extract some information. It'll make a graph for you um, like this. So you can see um, the proportion of function words versus content words in the document. Um, and uh, we can also compare that to the Wikipedia article. And we can see the Wikipedia article um, is a very bad article to work on. As you can see, there's only 143 words, so you get a very small sample size. It's very skewed, so a lot of things rep repeat. Um, and, uh, and then also you can see some highlighting in your gate document. So if I want to only look at function words, I mean content words in Quechua, all I have to do is turn that on and I can take a look at just the words that, are, that have meaning, we would say, so to have some lexical semantics. Okay.